with the first speaker. So the, the first speaker is Mr. Imenez Sergio. He is the coordinator of Project Fatigue for Light. He is a researcher at Simne and works also as an associate lecturer in structural analysis in mechanics at UPC in Spain. So if you are ready, Mr. Imenez, the floor is yours. It will work, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice to know. Okay, and you said that I should be clicking this. Mm. Yeah. No, everything works. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, Eric, for your kind presentation. Um, as Eric already told you, I'm Sergio Jimenez. I'm the coordinator of the Fatigue for Life project. And uh, the main aim that I have for today's presentation is to introduce you uh, this project and show you, share with you some of the results that we've already obtained on the, on the project. Uh, in order to do so, I prepared this presentation here following this structure uh, in which I will be first uh, presenting you basics of the Fatigue for Light uh, project. Then uh, I will also introduce you the consortium that it's working on the project and which are the main objectives that we're trying to uh, successfully uh, fulfill along the project. Then I will move towards the presentation of uh, this section, which is called project status, in which I will introduce you the work that we've been doing all along the, this period of time since we uh, start the project. And then finally, I will introduce some of the expected impacts coming from the uh, consecution of the Fatigue for Light project. Okay. Um, this project is an H2020 project um, funded under the topic of advanced light materials and their production processes for automotive applications. Uh, as already Eric mentioned, this is a three-year uh, project and we are now initiating our last year in the project and it's being coordinated by the research group from Barcelona CIMNE. Uh, a total of 13 partners is, is working on the on the project coming from Spain, France, Italy, and Sweden. And you can see here, which is the division between uh, research institutions, universities, industrial companies, and the standardization bodies that are working on the project uh, right now. Um, here, I have summarized the main objectives that we are pursuing in the Fatigue for Light, but uh, rather uh, than explaining them by myself, I prefer you to I prefer to share with you this uh, video that we've um, prepared on the Fatigue for Light for dissemination purposes. Did you know that the chassis of an electric vehicle accounts for 50% of its weight? What if we could reduce the weight and thus increase the vehicle range while contributing to a more sustainable mobility? Lightweight materials have been around for some time with great potential in reducing the vehicle's weight without compromising safety. However, they introduce significant challenges related to part design and performance. It's working on the lab. Select the optimal materials for lighter vehicle chassis and reduce the testing time for new materials. Based on eco the fatigue Maybe it's not a good option. <laughs> Mental methodologies to select the optimal materials for lighter vehicle chassis and reduce the testing time for new materials. Based on eco design and circular economy values, Fatigue for Light aims to boost the use of lightweight materials adapted to the chassis parts of electric vehicles, enhancing weight reduction while increasing vehicle safety. As one of the Light takes a step to make advancements in building a zero emission future while simultaneously minimizing production losses and meeting the industry needs. To find out more about the Fatigue for Light project, visit our website www.fatigueforlight.eu or follow us on social media. Okay, anyway, um, basically the main idea is to achieve a weight reduction at the vehicle, at the electric vehicle level. Uh, and 
we pretend to achieve this result by using new materials and also by developing new numerical technologies and new uh, tests, uh, experimental tests. This is the main idea of the, of the project. If you want to see the complete video, you can visit our YouTube page and you will find it there. Or even in our web page, you will find the link to, to the video. Okay. Then, now that you have more or less an idea of which are the objectives of the project and with what, are, what are we pretending to do on the project, uh, and uh, before showing you which are the results that we've been obtaining all along the project, um, let me just share with you which is the approach that we've been following uh, along the project. The Fatigue for Light is a three-step project in which we, first of all, focus on the study of the materials that we will be using to achieve our ob objectives. So we work at the following a material perspective and we focus all the efforts on characterizing the properties of those materials. Then once we've done that, we move towards including now the manufacturing effects uh, that would appear for sure on the final uh, pieces of the vehicle. And in order to do so, we move towards this lab demonstrator perspective. And uh, we there sim well, simulate and, and uh, perform some experimental tests on these, let's say, more advanced samples, uh, which in include the information obtained previously. But now we add these uh, new challenges coming from the manufacturing processes, uh, streaming, uh, punching, and uh, forming, for example. And then once we got all this knowledge, we apply it uh, in order to verify that we can achieve our objectives uh, by applying all these techniques and this knowledge on these final components, uh, specimens. This is a, just one example. And uh, by checking that we are fulfilling our objectives on these specimens here, on these components, we then scale the results to the chassis level. And all this work, we perform, we do all this work following three research lines. We follow a life cycle assessment perspective. We also do experimental work and also we dedicate some efforts for numerical modeling. And the results that I will be presenting are coming from the work done for each of these three research lines. Um, so regarding the life cycle assessment, uh, basically what we've done here is defining an eco-design eco uh, approach that we used uh, as a decision maker to, selection the, to select the materials to be used and also to define the design uh, of the chassis parts. And uh, from this uh, study, we finally end up by selecting these materials here, uh, which mainly are high strength uh, steels, manganese steels, uh, stainless steels, stainless steel, yeah, uh, aluminum solutions, and also hybrid solutions, including GFRP and aluminum. And uh, we also decided at this step uh, which were these um, geometries, these components that will be studied on this last part of the project, which are this uh, low control arm, this shocking tower, uh, this beam here, and these wheels. Now, moving towards the experimental work, uh, I've only included here two of the main outcomes of the project, which are uh, related with this, this work here, which is bas basically uh, the definition or the uh, proposal of new uh, experiments, new rapid fatigue tests, and we've, we've uh, used them to characterize our materials and we validate them comparing with the conventional techniques. And uh, we finally conclude uh, that we have achieved a really significant reduction uh, in time that uh, for sure will be really interesting for, for industry. And I'm also including here the big amount of work that uh, of effort that we've dedicated uh, to the um, 
a study of these uh, manufacturing effects on, the, on the, the, the effects that these manufacturing processes have on the materials that we are studying. And, sorry, and we here have studied punching, trimming, forming, and welding. Okay. And we've seen which is the effect over the fatigue, um, over the fatigue uh, response of the materials that we are studying. Uh, and uh, finally here, what I'm presenting is the work that we've done uh, with respect to numerical modeling. Um, on the Fatigue for Light project, basically what we've done is proposing a new uh, numerical methodology to study these fatigue processes. And uh, what I've included in this image is a brief summary of the steps that we've been following up to now uh, in order to um, first generate the methodology and then apply it and also improve it if necessary. Uh, so the first thing that we've done is a comparison with respect to the available uh, widely used commercial techniques for the study of fatigue processes. Then uh, we applied this methodology on the study of advanced fatigue failures, including load sequence effect, residual strength analysis, and overload phenomenon. And uh, right now we are finishing um, an extension of this methodology uh, of this methodology in order to include these uh, manufacturing effects that we also studied experimentally and I uh, commented previously. Here you can see uh, just two examples of one part of the uh, punching, punching um, modeling and also of the forming uh, modeling process. Okay. And uh, before going to this um, section of the impacts, I would like to comment some of the direct uh, outcomes which are which ca which can be quantified uh, that have already uh, come from the Fatigue for Light project in terms of participation in Congress se sessions. Uh, published papers, we've already published four peer review, um, uh, four papers in peer, peer review uh, journals. We've also worked on preparing dissemination material in terms of a website, the video that you've seen, uh, working on social media and flyer. Uh, I have the flyers there and if you want, you can ask me uh, for one or I can distribute it now. And we are also uh, currently working on the standardization process of the experimental techniques that uh, I previously mentioned. And I also wanted to mention here our participation in this electric vehicles uh, cluster that we used mainly to, um, to share in a more effective way with the whole community all the results and all the knowledge that we are obtaining from this set of uh, sister projects that Eric, uh, well, that, that uh, are presenting today on this session. And basically, uh, up to now, what we've been doing is participating in joint, joint seminars and uh, co congresses sessions. And uh, just to finish now, I would like to briefly talk about the impacts that uh, should be expected from the Fatigue for Life project, which should be, of course, related with the um, work that we are doing that, that I've already presented to you, uh, related with the use of new materials and the smart design that I, I let's say, mentioned, but not uh, presented in really uh, depth. Uh, we should expect uh, the weight reduction, which is the objective, the main objective of the, of the project. Also, uh, considering the use of these numerical techniques and the new experiment, experimental tools proposed from the project, we should expect an increase of efficiency in vehicle development. development. Uh, I've already mentioned, as I've already mentioned, uh, we've been working on the fatigue assessment and uh, we have a, 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 a work package dedicated to censoring. And from this uh, work, we expect to assess the structural integrity procedures and efficient repair reuse techniques. And uh, finally, related with the 
with the eco design perspective that we're following in the Fatigue for Light project, we uh, will finally uh, be able to generate an effective solution for reuse, recycling, and recovery of material. Uh, my last slide now is the connection of these impacts with the European policy objectives. And uh, this allows me to conclude that the Fatigue for Light project will contribute to generate a more competitive, smarter, greener, uh, connected and sustainable Europe. Uh, thank you very much and I will be glad to answer all your questions.